Well, good morning, everyone. Glad to see you here today. I hope you have come with your hearts open and ready to receive from the Lord and to fill this place with your worship this morning. Amen? Amen. Father, we are here to glorify your name, Lord. We are here to lift our hands up and praise you and worship you with everything we have inside of us, Lord. Holy Spirit, come and move in this place. Rest upon each of our heads, Lord. Fill us full of, of your joy, your peace, your grace. Let the Holy Spirit flood our souls this morning as we worship you and we give you praise and we exalt your holy name. In your precious name we pray. Amen. Lord, I've loved me, I don't deserve grace on top of grace. More than I've asked for, more than I'm worth, grace on top of grace. How sweet the sound, once lost, now found, heaven came down. Grace rescued me, hallelujah, I am free from my sin and penalty. At the cross you took my place, with your grace on top of grace. Lord, I have loved me, I don't deserve grace on top of grace. More than I've asked for, more than I'm worth, grace on top of grace. Hallelujah, I am free from my sin and penalty. At the cross you took my place, with your grace on top of grace. give him a shout this morning thank you lord for the grace lord that is given to us freely and we worship and we praise you lord and we raise our hallelujahs to you today lord jesus lord our needs that we have we give them to you lord and we trust that you will take care of those needs and you will fulfill us lord as we worship and we praise your holy name thank you jesus thank you lord I raise a hallelujah in the presence of my enemies. I raise a hallelujah louder than the unbelief. I raise a hallelujah. is a melody I raise a hallelujah heaven comes to fight for me I'm gonna sing in the middle of the storm louder and louder you gotta hear my praises run up on the ashes hope will the king is alive. Yes, Lord. I raise a hallelujah with everything inside of me. I raise a hallelujah. I will watch. 
watch the darkness flee. I raise a hallelujah in the middle of the mystery. I raise a hallelujah. Fear you lost your hold on me. I'm gonna sing in the middle of the storm. Louder and louder, you gotta hear my praises roar. Up from the ashes, hope will arise. Death is defeated, the king is alive. Jesus, and as we exalt your name, glory to your name, Lord Jesus. Blessed be your name. Oh, blessed be your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. Lord, you are the first thing we run to. And if that's not the case, it should be. Put your trust in him because he is there to protect you and guide you and lead you. All these things that I have had, dear, vanities that whisper in my ear, what I do if they'll disappear? Riches and fame and all that they could buy, I've come to find they never satisfy. What would I gain if my soul's the prize? I don't want to love what the world loves I don't want to chase what the world does I only want you I only want you First things first I seek your will Not my own Surrender all my bones to you Keep the first thing first Live your truth, walk your ways, set my eyes, Lord, I fix my face on you. All my desires reverse. 
to keep the first name first. I give it all my life and offering. My heart is yours, so have your way in me. Your kingdom's all I want to see. I don't want to love what the world loves. I don't want to choose what the world does. I only want you. To keep the first thing first, Lord. To keep the first thing first, all my desires reverse. To keep the first thing first, to keep the first thing first. I seek your will, not my own. Surrender all my wants to you. Keep the first thing first. To live your truth, walk your ways, set my eyes. Oh, I fix my face on you. All my desires reverse. To keep the first thing first. To keep the first thing first To keep the first thing first oh, All my desires reversed To keep the first thing first your holy name. Lord, I look to you daily for guidance, Lord. Lord, I hear your voice. I tune my ears to you, Father. Guide and direct my footsteps. Lord, guide and direct my mouth, Lord Jesus, that I will speak your words and not mine. Lord, that I will allow you to take control of my life and guide me, Lord Jesus, as I walk in faith. Hallelujah. You're my King, my Lord of all, and I worship you, Jesus. I worship you, Father. I want to be in your presence. Lord, I want to know you more. I want to seek your face daily, Lord Jesus. You're mighty. Caught up in your presence I just want to sit here at your feet I'm caught up in this holy moment I never want to leave Oh, I'm not here for blessings Jesus, you don't owe me anything More than anything that you can do I just want you I'm sorry When I've just gone through the motions I'm sorry just sing another song Take me back to where you started I open up my heart to you I'm sorry When I've come with my agenda I'm 
sorry when I forgot the joy in love. Take me back to where we started. I open up my heart to you. I'm caught up in your presence. I just want to sit here at your feet. I'm caught up in this holy moment. I never want to leave. Oh, I'm not here for blessings. Jesus, you don't know me anything. And more than anything that you can do, I just want you to see it. Presence. I just want to sit here at your feet. I'm caught up in this holy moment, Lord. I never want to leave. No, never want to leave. Oh, I'm not here for blessing. You don't know me anything and more than anything that you can do. I just want you. I just want you. Nothing else. Nothing else. Nothing else will do. Lord, I just want. Nothing else, nothing else, nothing else will do. Oh, I just want you. Nothing else, nothing else, nothing else will do. I just want you. Nothing else, nothing else. Nothing else will do. I'm caught up in your presence. I just want to sit here at your feet. I'm caught up in this holy moment, Lord. I never want to leave. Jesus, you don't know me anything. I'm caught up in your presence. I just want you. I'm caught up. I'm caught up in your presence. I just want to see. Holy moment, I never want to leave. Oh, I'm not here for blessings. Jesus, you don't know me anything more than anything that you can do. Just want. Just want you. I just want you. All of you, Jesus. I just want you. Oh Lord, I just want you. Lord, pour it on. We just need you, Lord. We just need you, Lord. We need you. Oh, I exalt you. I worship you. I raise my hands.
hands to you, Lord, I need you. Oh, Jesus, Lord, we need you. Oh, we need you. Lord, we praise you. Oh, lift your hands and worship you. He is here to meet your needs. He is here to touch your life. Give it all to Him. Lord, we just need you. Oh, we surrender. Yes, we surrender. Oh, we surrender. Lord, we need you. Nothing else will do, Lord. You are all we need. You will all that we desire, Father, because you are there to meet our needs, Father. Lord, you are there to lift us up, to give us victories. Too much has been stolen from us. Too much has been taken from us by the enemy. But we are here to take it back. And we are here to be victorious in the name of Jesus. Amen? We are here to glorify his name and exalt him and sing victory, hallelujah, glory to the King of Kings. Oh, bless his name. Bless his name. Yes, Lord. A person in my house. Change cycles like a daily medication. I can try, but I can't change my situation. Cause the light comes to wrap my joy. I moves, but I'm not destroyed. Raising like an army, and you're gonna hear the sound. I'm calling the angels down. I'm storming the gates of hell. Tell the devil he don't own my soul. I'm taking back what the enemy stole. I'm raising the battle cry. I'm holding the banner high with the power of the Holy Ghost. I'm taking back what the enemy stole. Oh, oh, oh. You can't speak the lies over my family. No. You can't break the promise that I stand. No. Ain't gonna let you put your back in the place now. One name is all I gotta say. Jesus, I'm calling the in the gates of hell Tell the devil he don't know my soul I take it back with the enemy stole I'm raising the battle cry I'm holding the battle high With the power of the Holy Ghost I take it back with the enemy stole Oh, 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 oh. Take it all back, take it all back Take it back with the enemy stole. Oh, oh, oh. You can't take the lies over my family. You can't break the promise that is landed. Ain't gonna let you put your back in the place now. Your name is all I gotta say. Jesus, I'm calling the angels down. I'm storming the gates of hell. Tell the devil he can hold my soul. I'm taking back what the enemy stole. I'm raising the battle cry. I'm holding the battle high with the power of the Holy Ghost. I'm taking back what the enemy stole. Oh, oh, oh. oh, 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 oh. Take it all back, take it all back. I'm taking back what the enemy stole. Oh, oh, oh. Take it all back, take it all back, take it back with the enemy stole. Amen. 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 Amen.
Testing, one, two, there we go. Sometimes you just have to restart, amen? Amen. How many believe that we're taken back what the enemy stole? Yep. Amen. I haven't asked Jim, but could you share what you shared with me, what your doctor report was? To share, come up here and get a mic. He's shy, yeah. <laughs> well, I just shared with Pastor last week. I, as many of you know, I've been dealing with the, the cancer issue. Brother Abe knows all about it, but um, went to my cancer doctor um, last week, and and uh, I'm always really nervous when I go in there. My blood pressure is always extremely high. And they go, well, you must have white coat syndrome because every time you come here, it's high. Get you too. <laughs> but, uh, and the thing I'm most nervous about is my little PSA score that tells you about your level of, of how much cancer you have. And, and he goes to his computer and he looks at me and he just gets this big old smile. My doctor does. And he looks at me and he said, well said, your PSA is almost non-existent. It's point zero zero two. And it's, hey, you can clap because I think a lot of it is due to all of your prayers. So clap for yourself too. But he told me, and now he's told me that he wants me to do a scan, and I guess this scan wasn't even available technology-wise back when I first had this problem. And he said to me, if the scan comes back negative, I'm taking you off all your cancer medicine. All right. So. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. That's good. Edith, can I share what you shared about your surgery? Sure. She said, now all the pain is gone. Amen. And her back. And she no longer has to wear the brace while she's out doing normal things. And we're taking back what the enemy stole. Amen? Amen. Amen. He's able. Amen. And we're still rejoicing over everything that God's done, all the testimonies we have heard here lately. And we're still rejoicing over Tina's testimony. That's great news that she's got. And I'm here to declare today that God is still able to meet every need. How many believe that to be true right now? Yep. Meet every need according to his riches and glory through Christ Jesus our Lord. And the scripture is quite clear, saints of God, no weapon formed against us shall prosper. I'm going to preach a little bit that on, on that here just a bit later. But saints, we're victorious today. Amen. Amen. I want to at welcome the blessed of the Lord into the house of God this morning. Amen. You are blessed. Amen. And if you're in this place today and you need a touch from God, I, I know the doctors have truths that they have, but they have to under, we have to understand something. We don't serve the doctors. We serve the great doctor, amen? And our great doctor is able to do abundantly above all we think, ask, or even imagine according to the power that's working within us. And if you're here in this room today and you need a healing in your body, I want you to stand right now. I'm not going to call you forward. You just need a healing in your body. I want you to stand right now in the name of Jesus. And no matter what it is, no matter what the situation is, God is able to meet that need. How many believe that to be true today? Amen. Amen. The scripture says the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man or a righteous woman does what? Availeth much. Amen. That is God's word in action. Amen. The scripture says these signs shall follow them that believe they shall lay hands on the sick and the sick shall what? Recover. Amen. I believe that to be true. Those of you that are standing and those of you who would like to, I want you to just come around these right now, that whether in the pews there and lay your hands upon them this very moment. And we're going to pray a prayer of agreement together and believing God to meet the need. We're also going to continue for, to believe uh, uh, God for Jim's scan to be completely clean. He's going to be completely delivered, completely set free. We believe that to be true. Saints of God, then now let's join together in a prayer of faith and believe God to meet the needs right now. Father God, we come to you right now in the name of Jesus. Jesus, and we're coming together as a body of believers, the body of Jesus Christ. And you said in your word, we're two agrees, touching anything according to your word and your will, they shall have what they want. And Lord, right now, we speak healing into this place right now. We call those things they are not as though they are, and we believe you for your word to be performed, and that your healing virtue will begin to flow in this place. Discouragement be gone in the name of Jesus Christ. Discouragement be gone in the name of Jesus Christ. Depression be gone in the name of Jesus Christ. 
cancer be gone in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Hallelujah. Lord, we speak health to these eyes right now, Lord God. We believe you to perform your word to restore. We find in your word that you touch the blind over and over and over again. And Lord, they receive their, ha their sight. Lord God, I pray right now for those who have difficulty hearing in this place today. Lord God, that you touch those eardrums right now. That you restore this fair folly cause, whatever it needs to be, Lord God, that you do a creative miracle and that you would bring healing, that you would bring health and you would bring deliverance right now. Lord God, for those in this room that are trapped by habits and bondages right now, Lord, we're speaking freedom. We're speaking freedom and liberty and we're asking right now, Lord God, that you would break those bondages in their lives, that they would be delivered and set free by the power and the blood of Jesus Christ. And Lord God, we stand together right now. No weapon formed against us shall prosper. Hallelujah. For you're able to do abundantly above all we think, ask, or even imagine. Lord God, we ask you right now that you send your power, you send your anointing. If necessary, Lord, send the angels, Lord God. But whatever you do, Lord God, may your power be manifested. May freedom and healings take place. May deliverance take place in this place right now. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, let it be done. Let it be done. We speak health. We speak freedom. We thank you for the good reports right now. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God, for the good reports. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, hallelujah. I'm calling the angels down. I'm storming the gates of hell. Tell the devil we don't know my sorrow. I'm taking back what the enemy stole. I'm raising the battle cry. I'm holding the banner high with the power of the Holy Ghost. I'm taking back what the enemy stole. I'm calling the angels down. I'm storming the gates of hell. Tell the devil he don't know my sorrow. I'm taking back what the enemy stole. I'm raising the battle cry. I'm holding the banner high with the power of the Holy Ghost. I'm taking back what the enemy stole. Amen. Amen. Thank you, worship team. Hallelujah. Also, Jeannie got a real good report, too. I forgot her out there, but she got an awesome report, too. And, and so if you ask her about that, it's just glorious what God is doing. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Well, I hope you all had a great Fourth of July. We still have some out traveling, so pray that they get home safely. And, and uh, I can say I'm kind of glad it's over because <laughs> my box fan wasn't keeping out all the booming. <laughs> If you know what I'm talking about. Those in the country don't have to worry about that. But again, welcome you to Grace Point Church this morning where your past doesn't define your future. And I am so grateful to know today that my name is written down in the last book of life. Amen. And one of these days, those books are going to be open wide. And Jesus is going to see my name. The Father is going to see my name. And he's going to say, well done, my good and faithful servant. Amen. We're going to continue in our series, Take It All Back. If you haven't figured that out. But before I get there... There's a whole bunch of these wonderful tomatoes out there. Chester's son was growing them, and Chester brought them in for us today, and I made them leave them out there. Because I'm afraid if you got them in here, you may throw them at me. <laughs> just teasing, just teasing. But if you'd like some fresh-grown tomatoes, go ahead, and there's some bags out there, fill up, and take them home with you. They are also awesome, awesome, good, and they make the best BLTs. Amen. Hallelujah. So praise God for that. God is so awesome and God is so good. And so we're going to look at our, our, our continuing our, our series here, to Take It All Back. And we're going to uh, finish up, well, we're going to go to part two of last week's message. And the title of the message is Knowing Our Enemy and His Tactics and Our Mission, part two. And this is going to go, this message is going to go to part three next week, it looks like at this point, but we'll see what happens. Anyway, I'm here today. I am so happy about God, what he's doing in our lives. I'm so happy what's going on. You know what? I'm actually happy what's going on in our nation because I know that God's still ruling and reigning. And I also know this is true. The darker it gets out there, the brighter the gospel light will shine. And more opportunities, we're going to see God doing mighty miracles through his people. How many believe God wants to do mighty miracles today? He wants to do it through his people. And so, saints of God, just, just a quick review. We are living in very, very difficult times. Everyone agree with that? Said amen, right? 
And we see the kingdom of darkness advancing in our world. And the reason that's happened is that we have people out there who have been blinded by the power that's greater than they are. They've been blinded by the power of the enemy. And there is where we set up with the spiritual warfare we were talking about. But remember, Ephesians 6 and 12 says this, For we, and the we there is us Christians, wrestle not against flesh and blood, uh, but against principalities and against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. And then last week we looked at spiritual warfare is all around us and that we have to, we have to wrestle. Say wrestle. If, let me tell you right now, Christians, if you believe that once you become saved, once you're a Christian, life is a piece of cake, boy, you've got a big surprise coming. Because Jesus said clearly, in this world you shall have tribulation. But he didn't stop there. Hallelujah. But <laughs> be of great joy because I've what? I have overcome the world. Amen? And saints of God, so this struggle is going on. So now we're gonna, this is what we're going to pick up here today is this. Why such a strong offensive of spiritual warfare today? And what Satan is doing here very quickly is he's got this offensive going on. And the word offensive simply means this. It means a military operation that is aggressive, that's attacking and invading. Can you see that in America today spiritually? This army of, uh, of the enemy, he, they're attacking, they're invading, uh, invading, and so it's very, very strong, which leads me to the first fact here. The first fact about spiritual warfare. Spiritual warfare is designed by Satan to do three things, steal, kill, and destroy. And I didn't hear any amens on that, but well, that's the truth. We need to understand that. Amen? Say, John 10 and 10 says this, The thief cometh not but to steal and to, to steal and to kill and destroy. And the first thing I want to look at this portion of Scripture is this, The thief will come. I would like to tell you, no, he won't come, but he will come. And each and every one of us, I believe, who've been saved any period of time whatsoever, we recognize the times that the thief has come after us. Anyone ever recognize that? He's come to steal. He's come to take away from us. He's come to, to do harm to us. But he is going to come. And there is no ands, ifs, and buts about that. And, and, and the thief has come. But I want to tell you just a little secret here. When he comes... I believe this to be true. God will put a limit on what he can do to the children of God. Amen? And you ever notice when he comes, it seems like he comes in bunches? Just not one or two things. But it seems like one thing after another thing after another thing and another thing, and you get to the place, God, are we ever going to get through this? Let me tell you, saints of God, God will get us through this, and there will be a time of reprieve. But that won't last forever, because then the thief will what? Come. Everyone going, well, I'm glad I came to hear that. <laughs> well, he comes in like a flood. But when he comes in like a flood, the Lord our God will what? Raise a standard against him. And I want to dissect this word still for a moment, okay? This word still means to embezzle or to cheat. And what the idea here of embezzle and to cheat is this, that, that the thief takes without your permission or, or has a right to, and at times secretly takes from you and you don't realize it. He comes in to steal, kill, and destroy. If you knew what time the thief was going to come, you'd, have, you'd be waiting for him, right? But what happens sometimes is that we don't know when the thief is going to come, and so we just kind of go, oh, well, you know, everything's going so good right now. And I want to tell you, that's a time you need to wake up and be prepared and be alert, because when everything seems to be going the way it should be going, and we say, thank God for those times it happens, we still need to be alert, because the thief is coming to embezzle and to cheat us. And I want to tell you today, saints of God, as children of God, he has no right to do that to us. And I will get to that here in a little bit, a little bit later here. But, but saints of God, the idea here is that before the enemy can be really effective in instilling from us, we have to be in a place where we're not listening to the voice of the Holy Spirit. We're not listening to God. And we're doing our own thing. I know none of you would do your own thing, right? We're all more, more sanctified than that, right? And it becomes a very dangerous thing when the thief comes and we're doing our own thing. We're not hearing the voice of God. We're not listening to the word of God. We're not following what God says we need to follow. 
And we, what we have done then, we've opened up the door for him to come and embezzle from us. You know what? Satan is trying today to steal your spiritual blessings. How many have spiritual blessings today? They belong to you. He's trying to take those away from each and every one of us. Satan's trying to cheat us out of our spiritual inheritance. Saints of God, I want you to understand something. God has more for you than you have right now. God's got blessing upon blessing, upon grace upon grace, and mercy upon mercy. Jesus has promised to meet all our needs. Saints of God, our, our past needs, our present needs, and our future needs. God has more for each and every one of us. How many believe that to be true today? He has more for us. And you know what Satan's trying to do? He's trying to embezzle you of that inheritance that's yours that's coming. We're here to put him underneath our feet, amen? Uh, the enemy is trying to steal our homes, our marriages, our children, our nation. Satan wants to embezzle God's blessings from our lives, to steal from us emotionally, spiritually, physically, and eternally. The thief is coming to try to steal us from the church. Satan loves it when God's people get their feelings hurt and quit going to church. And Satan is stealing from you if that happens. Amen? God wants us to have his peace, his joy, his strength, his faith, and trust in him. But that will not happen if we allow, and I say this word, allow the thief to steal from us. He can't get it any other way. He's got to deceive us to take it from us. And if we've had some of that taken away from us, we're here to declare to the devil today, we're taking it back. Amen? Hallelujah. Satan, you cannot have my peace. You cannot have my joy. You cannot have my faith. You cannot have my trust in God. My faith and hope and trust is in the name of Jesus. Amen? And you can't take it back. The second truth about spiritual warfare is this. Satan masquerades, transforms himself into an angel of light. And this is here is where we have to be very, very, very careful as Christians. Masquerade, it simply means this, appearing as what is not to deceive. You know, it's kind of like a wolf in sheep's clothing. Satan deceives people by making them think that he is God. And, and Satan, in reality, when he comes that way, he's embezzling from them. And, and Satan appears, he masquerades as an angel of light. 2 Corinthians 11 and 14 says, And no marvel, in other words, don't be surprised, for Satan himself, not one of his demons, demons can do it too, but Satan himself transforms himself into an angel of light. That word transform there in the NIV says it this way, No wonder, for Satan himself masquerades as an angel of light. And both of those translations with transformed or masquerades, that's a correct translation of that, Hebrew, that, that Greek word there. And the word angel simply means a messenger or envoy. You know, it, it, it's a messenger. It's a human messenger. It's an angelic messenger. But now it says it's an angel of light. And what it's simply saying this, Satan outwardly promotes himself as a messenger or a minister of righteousness. Satan shows up on the scene and he's saying, here, I'm God. I'll show you about God. I'll teach you about God. And the things I have for you will give you wisdom and knowledge that are greater than you've ever had. And he appears as God. But he is an angel of light. And here's what we have to understand. Very rarely, most of the time, Satan never approaches a Christian or an unsaved person as Satan. He masquerades as an angel of light, and he appears to be looking like the original. And this is very, 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 very important, saints of God. This word transform and, masquer and, and masquerading simply means this. It means the changing of the outside, but not touching the inside. The inside is exactly what it was. It's like putting lipstick and dresses on a pig. You can put all the, the lipstick on a pig you want and all the dresses on a pig you want, but when it's all said and done, you know what it still is? It's a pig. And when Satan masquerades as an angel of light, he puts all the outward appearances of God on him. When it's all said and done, the inside is not changed. It's still Satan. Everyone agrees, said? 
Satan approached Eve in the garden. That she, he approached Eve in the garden with a great big pitchfork and a big tail and big horns and flames flying out of his mouth. No, he approached Eve, uh, Eve, he approached Eve like, hey, I got good news for you. You can know about the knowledge of good and evil. It is so awesome. And you can be like God. And you can be this and you can be that. And you know what? God's trying to withhold his best from you. And so, you know what, Eve? If you want to have all this peace, all this joy, all this happiness, just take and eat of the fruit. I would never harm you. Look at me. I'm good. Well, we know this story after that, don't we? Those who are deceived by the angel of light's disguise will end up accepting the lies of the angel of light. They begin to lose their power and authority, especially if they're Christians, and become servants of not of God, but of the enemy. Quiet in here. The angel of light and his followers appear again, to promote just causes, to promote goodness and mercy. The angel of light and his followers produce errors and falsehoods. They turn the truth of God into a lie and bring destruction. Again, John 10 and 10, the thief cometh not but to steal and to kill and to what? Destroy. Now, hear me. This is a progression. We start out by stealing from us. It goes to killing us and it goes to destroying us. It's a progression. And here's what I want us to see as Christians here, you know, is that we can stop in the, uh, Satan in his tracks before he steals from us. I believe that with my whole heart. He can, we, he, we can stop it if we're alert and prepared and waiting for what the enemy's going to do. Amen? But once we've opened the door for him to steal from us, then the next progression is to try to kill us. And the idea here, saints, is this, is that we become a victim of the angel of light. And, and the idea here, this word kill, simply means to slaughter or to slay the slaying of a victim. What's this angel of light want to do? He wants to kill you and slaughter you. He wants to destroy you. And we become a victim of the enemy here. Satan's progressed to the next step of trying to kill and slaughter us. And the idea here is to kill us physically. Satan's primary way of doing this is through counterfeits. How many want to be happy? How many want joy? How many want peace? How many want comfort? How many want to be having a great life? Well, what Satan does, he tries to convince us there is a better way than God's way. And Satan's way is to get us hooked up with, you ready for this, drugs and alcohol? To get our behaviors mentally and emotionally caught up in pornography? to get our minds on illicit type of sexual immorality and get involved into it. He gets us crossed over into false teachings, false doctrines, false religions, because we're being modern now. And all these things are designed to bring destruction to our physical bodies. Amen? Amen. The angel of light causes evil to look beautiful. Beautiful looking evil. But the trouble is with beautiful looking evil, it's deadly and brings destruction. And Satan is an expert at making evil look beautiful. The Amazon River Basin there's a large species of colorful spiders. I know some of you are going, ew. Well, this species of spiders actually 
goes out and sits on the banks and spreads out its body, and it looks like a blossom of a brilliant flower. Looks so beautiful. And when the honeybees come by, they're looking to go to the flowers to get the nectar, to make the honey, and they pollinate all this stuff. And they go to these spiders that are open, wide open, beautiful looking. I saw a couple of them online, and they're beautiful looking. But instead of finding nectar for honey, they secrete poisons which paralyzes the bees or the other insects who show up and ultimately ends up taking the bees and the others' lives that land on that. And that's exactly what the enemy tries to do to us if we give in to that. Give us this beautiful evil. In the end, it brings destruction. Saints, we don't have to allow that to happen. Amen? The beautiful appearance of the spider is not what it seems like. It's not a flower. It's death. Next thing, next thing here, John 10, 10, the thief cometh not to steal, to kill, but to destroy. And this word destroy simply means this. It means destruction in the afterlife. Not only does Satan want to destroy your physical body, steal your blessings, he wants to destroy your soul in hell. His goal, saints of God, is simply is this, that you become a sinner, that you walk away from God 100%, you turn your back 100% on God, the unbeliever never comes to the truth, and here's something, saints of God, this destroy is talking about the wrath of God that's poured out upon a sinner, it's talking about eternity in hell, where there are no second chances after death, and I know some of you right now said, oh no, we can't be talking about hell, I believe we need to talk more about hell. Because there's probably more hell in the pulpit to be less hell in the pews. Amen. Amen? And the wrath of God is poured out on the unrighteous. The wrath of God is poured out on the ungodly. The wrath of God is poured out upon those who have walked away from God. And saints again, there are no second chances after death. That's why today is the day of salvation. Everyone agreed said. But I can hear you right now saying, well, a righteous God, a loving God would never send anyone to hell, and I'll agree with you. He'll never send anyone to hell. But what he will do is honor your choices about eternity and honor your choices about Jesus or your choice to reject Jesus. He'll honor that. And so in reality, we choose where we spend eternity, in the smoking section or the non-smoking section. It's our choice. Amen? There's a story here, a true story, and this might be Mike and Terry's rich uncle, I don't know. But anyway, Dr. Maurice Rawlings, MD, cardiologist, professor of medicine at the, Tennessee, at the University of Tennessee College of Medicine in Chattanooga. He was a devout atheist who considered all religion hocus pocus. Okay, to him, death was nothing more than a painless extinction. That was it. But in 1977, Rawlings was resuscitating a man who had came back from the edge of death, and the man was terrified and screaming. And Rawlings wrote, and I quote, Each time he regained a heartbeat and respiration, the patient screamed, I'm in hell. He was terrified and pleaded with me to help him. I was scared to death. Then I noticed a genuine look of alarm on his face. He had a, had a, a, terrific, had a terrified look, on, a look worse than the expression seen in death. This patient had grotesque grimaces expressing sheer horror. His pupils were dilated, and he was perspiring and trembling. He looked as if his hair was on end, and Dr. Rawlings said he was shaken because he, he was shaken and intrigued with his near-death experience, and so he reached out, started to do some researching to study firsthand what was going on here, because after all, he was a devout, claimed atheist. And as this man was screaming for help for him to help him, he didn't know what to do. Amen? And so he started to study near-death experiences in which people reported. And it's about 50% of the reports he saw, it said this, that people moved peacefully toward a light, a tunnel of great light. There was great peace. There was just a, a great sense of awe and calmness. And they went. And then he said the other 50%, which they left out of research information, 
found that victims were reported seeing lakes of fire, devil-like figures, and other sights reflecting the horrors of hell. And he said, just listening to those patients has changed my whole life, claims Dr. Rawlings. He said, and I like this, there is a life after death, and if I don't know where I'm going, it's not safe to die. Amen? And through those experiences, Dr. Rawlings began to do, his Bible, do a Bible study, an atheist doing a Bible study. He learned everything about hell from the scriptures and other subjects, and he became a Christian man. Hallelujah. You talk about taking back what the enemy stole. Amen? Hallelujah. The next truth this morning is this. Weapons formed against us do not have to prosper. Can I get an amen? amen. Isaiah 54 and 17 says this, no weapon that is formed. And I'm going to stop there just for a moment. I don't have this in the notes up there. This word for means established by evil. Okay? No weapon that is established by evil. It kind of makes a new meaning to that, right? No weapon established by the evil rulers. I love this. Formed against the shall what? Prosper. Hallelujah. Now, that word weapon there is simply means this. It means a military equipment or an instrument of death. So these are instruments of death that are established by evil rulers trying to take us, okay? And I like that. So that but it will not what? Shall not what? Prosper. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The word prosper means effectively accomplish an intended goal. And that, att that intended goal is to steal, kill, and destroy. And saints of God, as a Christian today, we need to start claiming this portion of Scripture and take back anything the enemy is stealing from us. Amen? The weapons formed against us shall not prosper. And what God is saying here simply is this. In spiritual warfare, we can defeat the enemy scheme to steal, for, steal from us before it happens. Before it happens. Because it's a whole lot easier to stop what the enemy's trying to do than try to take it back. Amen? But if we have done it, we can't take it back. Then it says then, okay, every tongue that shall rise up against the in judgment shall be what? Condemned. And what that simply is saying, rising up in judgment here is talking about being accused. Constantly being accused of wrongdoing, being accused of things that are wrong in church. And what is, G what is, what is Satan? He is the accuser of the brethren. He is constantly accusing us before God the Father and bringing up all our sins and everything we've ever done wrong. He's accusing us over and over and over and over again. Kind of sounds like the political system today, right? Constantly accusing you of something. But here's what's happening here. As a child of God, <laughs> Satan's accusing you of all your past failures. Amen? Amen? But all your past failures, you ready for this, are under the blood of Jesus Christ. And when God the Father sees you, hallelujah, when God the Father looks at you, he doesn't see your past failures. He doesn't see your past sins. He sees the blood of his son, Jesus Christ. And now we are the righteousness of God in Christ, hallelujah. And all those accusations made against us are not going to succeed. Isn't that good, saints of God? Now look at this next phrase. This is the heritage of the servant of the Lord. I want you to, if you've got your Bible out, highlight this. This is my heritage. Amen? Amen? As a servant of the Lord, this is my heritage. Hallelujah. No weapon established by the evil ruler shall prosper. They will not come to pass, and every tongue that rises up against me isn't going to prosper either. Hallelujah. This is my heritage. Hallelujah. And he goes on, this is my heritage. This is the heritage of the servant of the Lord, for their righteousness is of me, saith the Lord God Almighty. Saints of God, I want you to understand something right now. You today are the righteousness of God in Christ, if you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. This moment, it's not talking about getting to heaven someday and that happening. This very moment, you're the righteousness of God in Christ. So when the enemy comes in and tries to attack you and that weapon is formed against you, you need to stand up in the name of Jesus. I'm claiming my heritage right now. This weapon will not prosper today. Hallelujah. And everyone 
who tries to condemn me and judge me and put me down, and Satan bringing up my past failures and all those kind of things, I can say right now, my heritage is this, that will not prosper either. As a matter of fact, those who judge me are going to be condemned. Speaking of Satan, amen? And you know what? There's coming a day, saints of God, when God's going to take it all back. And the enemy of our soul is going to be tied up and then cast into the lake of fire forever and ever and ever. There's going to be time when the enemy is going to be all tied up and, and, and in prison because of what God has done. And we who were, who were there at the saints are going to look at them, Satan and go, this is the one that we feared so much? And we're going to realize who we are in Christ Jesus and what God has done for us. This is our heritage. No weapon formed against us shall prosper. Everyone agreed, said? Amen. Now I've got to add an unless. How many liked all that part? Unless we trade away our birthrights for a bowl of stew like Esau did. Hmm? Unless we're like Adam and Eve in the garden who gave into the lies. I didn't get any amens on that. But the good news is, you ready for that? This, even if that were to happen, we can still take it all back by coming back to Jesus. Amen? Hallelujah. The fourth spiritual truth about warfare tonight is this. Our adversary, the devil, wants to devour. Say devour. First Peter 5 and 8 says, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary... Now, I like this. I don't like it, but that, what's that, your? Your personal adversary. Oh, aren't you feeling good now? Your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walking about seeking whom he may be... That he may what? Devour. Now, I want to kind of dissect this verse for a moment here. Sober. Okay. How many want to know what the word sober means? Good, I'm going to tell you. It means temperate, well-balanced, self-controlled, mentally calm, and to drink no wine. What's he saying here? How many want to have victory over the devil? How many don't want to be devoured by the devil? The battle's in the mind. As a man thinketh, so is he. And the idea here in our minds, how many got minds? Is that we don't allow anything to cloud our minds. Because when things begin to cloud our minds is when we stop hearing the voice of the Holy Spirit the way we need to hear it. We begin we can let our guards down. We don't discern the spiritual realities around us. We lower our guards. And let me tell you right now, self-controlled mind, how many have an anger issue? Anger issues cloud your mind. Because anger issues usually causes you not to use your mind, but lose your mind. And you step out and do things that you would not normally do because you've lost control of your mind due to the anger. Amen? Oh, oh I must have really hit home there. Hatred. Clouds your vision. If you allow hatred to grow in your mind, you'll end up doing things that you would not normally do. As a matter of fact, most murders are done because of hatred. They hate someone so bad that they take their lives. It's a very dangerous, dangerous thing. Everyone agreed, said? Bitterness. Terrible. If you're angry, it says you're just like a murderer because bitterness drives you to do things. Your senses are lowered. It drives you to do things that are not good. Worry. 
Oh, this is getting dangerous, right? Worry clouds your senses. Worry begins to magnify the problems, begins to magnify the devil. Worry is a horrible, horrible, horrible thing. And now I've got to get to the two last big ones. Drugs. Illicit drugs lowers your sensibilities. Alcohol. Now, we know this one's for sure, right? We've used alcohol for years to drop, have certain people drop their senses and their guards, right? What do you mean? What do you mean? I can't say one drink is going to send someone to hell. I can't say that. But I can tell you this, it's sure going to cause you to act like it. Amen? Sober-minded means I'm not putting anything in my mind that clouds my mind, that breaks my sensibilities, that breaks my connection to God. I want to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit. Everyone agreed, said? Amen. 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 And we have to be sober if we're going to watch for the attacks of the enemy so he doesn't steal from us. The next word here I want to look at here is vigilant. This word vigilant means this. You ready for it? Stay awake. Okay? Stay alert. So I wonder if that's a sin again. That means we can't sleep in church. <laughs> the idea is to be, to, to be and stay watching. And the idea is that we have to be on our guard. Because when everything's going good, we let down our guard. We can't let down our guard. We've got to make sure our guard is constantly up. I'm not talking about in fear here, but just being aware of the, the, the situation. We're just being aware of what's going on around us. Because I can tell you right now, saints of God, if everything's going right now, he's coming after you eventually. And we don't have to be destroyed. We can be on our guard. And when he shows up, we can stand up in the name and authority of Jesus Christ. And now to say, be gone in the name of Jesus. Amen? Then we have our adversary here. This word adversary, it means a legal opponent or an opponent in a lawsuit. And the idea of this here is simply as this, and I kind of mentioned it, Satan is standing up there accusing us, and the word a devil simply means slanderer, false accuser. He's slandering us. He's constantly, constantly reminds us of our past and our failures, and I have good news for you today, saints of God. My past and failures are under the blood of Jesus Christ, and they no longer define who I am. I am now a blood-washed child of God, an heir of God, and a joiner of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I'm not the tail, but I am the head. Hallelujah. I'm an overcoming child, a conquering God. Hallelujah. I am a child of the Most High God. Amen. Amen. But again, it seeks, uh, uh, Satan goes around like a roaring lion seeking what? Whom he, catch that last word, may devour. You know what that says to us as Christians today? He just can't come in and devour us. But he's looking for the, us to give him an opportunity to do it. Amen? Now, I remember when I first saved, I heard a sermon about a roaring lion, and, it, and they said, don't be afraid of the roaring lion because a roaring lion can't bite. Well, that's true. If his mouth is wide open, he can't bite. But that's not the purpose of a roaring lion. That's not his purpose whatsoever. The, the point of the roaring lion, you ready for this? <laughs> is to decide which one he's going to bite. <laughs> Amen? Because a roaring lion, when he comes to conquer a, a herd of animals, he realizes he can't conquer the whole herd. He can't eat the whole herd at once. And so when he comes up to a, a herd of animals, what, what the lion does, he, he creeps up to them real quickly there, and then he goes, Rawr! and he watches to see how the herd is going to respond to his roaring. And what he's looking for then on this hunt, he's looking for prey that's weak. He's looking for a, a prey that maybe be wounded. He's looking for the prey that does not have their mind sober and they're not alert, they're not vigilant. He's looking for the naive, the innocent. But what he's looking for most is this. He's looking for the one who will jump and separate himself from the herd. Now, why does Satan attack so hard? You ready for this? He wants to separate us. He wants to separate us from the herd. And I'm going to say this, we're the herd. He attacks and roars loudly to see who he can separate 
And when he catches that one who has separated himself, he doesn't hold back because he's chosen his victim wisely. So he slowly trots. He'll pass, go past the rest of the herd to that one who has separated himself from the herd. And guess what happens? That one who separates himself from the herd gets viciously attacked. Amen? Now, what's that saying to us? You ready for this? I'm glad you asked. I'm going to tell you. We cannot afford to separate ourselves from the herd today. Amen? We cannot allow offenses to cause us to walk away. We cannot allow offenses to cause us to turn our back on our church because the Bible is quite clear in the last days. You ready for this? Forsake not the assembling yourself together as the manner of some have. And even more so as you see that day approaching. And you know what, saints of God, how many are seeing the day of Jesus approaching? How many are seeing the rapture of the church approaching? Saints of God, we cannot afford to separate ourselves from the body of Christ. We need each other. Because when the roaring lion is coming after us and we stay together as a group, hallelujah, he's just going to roar. But the one who gets their feelings hurt, the one who is getting cold-hearted, bolts out. They set themselves up to be devoured. That's good preaching if you like it or not. Amen. The word devour means this here. It means swallow up consume to destroy. The thief cometh what? To kill, to steal, kill, and destroy. But I've come that you might have life and what? Have it more abundantly. I'm not going to get through this whole message, so. <laughs> so first, uh, Luke in 23, 31 says, simply says this, Simon, Simon, it's not up there. Behold, Satan has desired to have you, that he may sift you as wheat. And what the Greeks actually says there, it says, Simon, 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 which is Peter, Peter, behold, Satan has demanded to have you. Now think about that. Satan has demanded to have you. Satan is not a respecter of persons either. And Satan is demanding to have all of us who know Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. He's demanding that. But the good news is, you ready for this? If we're following God, he can't have us. Because greater is he that is in us than what? He that is in the world. The same spirit that raised Christ Jesus from the dead now dwells in your mortal bodies. So saints of God, simply I'm going to wrap it up here is this. Why we need to know the enemy's tactics is first and foremost is this, so we don't fall to the tactics ourselves. So we can stop the enemy's attack before we have to take it all back. And then, saints of God, if we're walking where we need to be walking with the Lord, it gives us power and the authority to take the other things back that we face in battles and other things going on around us. But first of all, we need to be through boot camp. We need to follow the Lord wholeheartedly. We need to do what God has called us to do and be who God's called us to be and prepare ourselves, our hands for the battle. He prepares our hands for war. Everyone agree with that? That's what he says. He prepares us. And if we're following him wholeheartedly, saints of God, only victory is ahead. No matter the attack, no matter what comes against us, no matter what we're facing, when it's all said and done, we are victorious through Jesus Christ our Lord. Then we can rise up and say, I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. I can't do it on my own, but I can do it through God. Through God, I can do all things he has called me to do. Everyone agreed, said? Amen. 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 God is so good, isn't he? Let's end there. Hallelujah. Father God, I want to thank you and praise you so much for your great love and your mercy. And Lord, I know 
that sometimes this isn't the most exciting thing to hear about what the enemy can do, but it is an exciting thing, Lord, to put the enemy where he belongs. And, Lord God, for us to do that, we have to know his tactics, his schemes. But, Lord, we also have to know your power and your authority to have it done and to accomplish it, Lord God. And, Lord Jesus, I pray right now for anyone in this room, anyone watching online, Lord, if they're struggling with anything that's been taken away from them spiritually, Lord God, Lord, today they would rise up in the authority in the name of Jesus Christ and take it back from the enemy, that they repent of the things of their lives that aren't, should not be there, that those things would come underneath the blood of Jesus Christ, they would be forgiven and set free, they would be delivered by the power of the Holy Spirit, and Lord God, we're asking right now, you do whatever's necessary, if you need to send angels, send an angel, if you need to empower your church, empower your church, Lord God, and Lord God, if you need to send the power of your Holy Spirit, send the power of the Holy Spirit, but Lord, let your name be uplifted and glorified, and may freedom ring through our lives in this land, and Lord God, may we take back anything that's been stolen from us, and to begin to take back what's been taken from this nation. And Jesus Christ, we give it all to you right now. In your name we pray. And all God's people agreed said, amen. amen. God bless you in Jesus' name.